Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Oh, I was kind of late getting to y'all this evening. You don't never need help from nobody else. All you got to do now. Where we at, people? Where we at? I know y'all didn't think I was not going to show up. I'm going to be here now. Whatever you do. Uh, 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 do it good. Uh, 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 uh. Whatever you do. do oh, it what's up, Gwendy Lily? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh. What you doing when you're doing what, what you, you look doing, like you're doing. doing. Express yourself. Yo, I'm running a little behind tonight, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. You know, you know. Since you guys are already here, I'm going to go ahead and do my thing too. But you know what? I got to hear this part. In the jungle too. In the jungle too. Everybody on the floor now. Uh, kangaroo. So let the horns do the thing they do. Say it if you think that. I know we wasn't doing the, the bank head bounce back then, but uh, I'm bouncing it now. Uh, well, I ain't got nobody to bump with, so you know, you know, you know, you know. Don't pick it, dig it, don't pick it, don't pick it, don't pick it. What's up, people? What's up? I'm running behind time this tonight. Simple as this. I already had my topic picked out, and I tried to avoid watching the debate last night. But then once I watched the debate, I had to redo my whole show. So next week's show, I think, is done, unless I change it at the last minute. But here's the deal. Um... I feel good simply because um, somebody's actually paying attention to my podcast. Why do I say that? Because all of the candidate strengths and weaknesses that I've discussed in detail here are now being covered by the major networks. Now, mind you, I'm a one man show. All of my podcasts, I, I do the research. I write them up, I produce them, I direct them, and I present them to you guys. I say this not because I need to be validated. I say it because it confirms that the claims that I've been making for the last 20 weeks or so are authentic and, and real. Now for the matter at hand. Though I predicted Bloomberg's money would result in a meteoric rise... I take no pleasure in that prediction. As a matter of fact, I was hoping that I was wrong and that he would fade away. But that's not what billionaires do when they have everything and enough money to buy a presidency. So tonight, we will focus on the Vegas Democratic debate. Um, affectionately, tonight's podcast is titled Eagles in, Sleep in Sheep's Clothing. One of the things that gets me about Mike Bloomberg, he reminds me so much of Donald Trump. So tonight I'm going to focus a little bit on the things that I think that they have in common. Here are five reasons. Number one, I see the possibility of us making the same mistake, which means in 2016, for some reasons, 46% of registered voters did not vote. And as a result, Trump became president. Now I see, hear people who want to vote for Bloomsburg because they feel like he can beat Trump at his own game. It's easy to beat him when you play the same game, when you're playing from the same playbook. So I don't want to see us make the same mistake that we made in 2016. That's number one. Number two, I hear a lot of people who've ex accepted what I call Mike's disingenuous 
policy. Other people just said that is bullshit. And I'll go with that as, as well. You know me, I'm a little bit of vocabulary, so disingenuous, aka bullshit. I guess they're synonyms. I hear people who accept his apology for the things that he did. And I know, and you know, that he doesn't mean it. So I can't understand how we're such a forgiving people that we're willing to accept it. Um, number three, I talked to people from New York who remember the stop and frisk. And they remember this young kid by the name of Khalif Browder. And that's why I posted the story on my page. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, go to the page and check it out. Um, and I'll get a, into that a little bit more later on. Number four, I've seen tapes of Bloomberg bragging about sending police into the black and Hispanic neighborhoods for the stop and frisk. He says, this is where 90% of the crimes occur. If you throw them up against the wall, you'll find the gun and so forth and so on. And he thought it was, he thought it was cute. And he had so many people that supported him. So I don't want to see it happen. You know, I'm not forgiving him for that. For that. So that's number four. Number five. I know Bloomberg profited from the extra prison labor in for-profit prisons that he's affiliated with. So all of these five things remind me of somebody we all know and don't like. We know and don't like. Know and don't like. But what scares me most is we have a possibility of having to choose between two wealthy, racist, self-righteous, egomaniacs who feel like they're above the law. If this happens, I can see us having to choose again between the lesser of two evils. That's not much of a choice. Lastly, like in 2016, we run the risk of 45, 46% uh, of registered voters just tuning out and not voting at all. Either way, we're looking at a no-win situation. For that reason, I call them two sides of the same coin. So if we look at what DT and MB have in common, they're both wealthy men who believe the law doesn't apply to them. Bloomberg is pissed that 45 got elected because nobody expected, including 45, expected him to win the presidency. So what does Bloomberg do? He switches parties, he goes from the Republican Party to the Democratic Party, and he bankrolls himself to run for President of the United States. So who is Mike Bloomberg? We've already talked about some things, but what we haven't talked about is, until he came along, New York had a two-term policy. He circumvented that and had three terms as the, govern um, the mayor of New York. Um, so three tenures sounds like somebody we know, right? If it were up to them, they would be president for life because he's great, great, really great, super, super, and nobody's done the job the way he's done it. Like 45, he's had a number of sexual harassment, um, cases that have ended in non-disclosure agreements, which basically means take this money and shut the hell up. So, um again, above the law. Most infamously in this stop and frisk policy, we talked a little bit about Khalif Browder. Khalif Browder was a 16 year old young man. He was caught up in a stop and frisk and he was sent to um, Rikers Island supposedly for stealing a backpack. Now, anybody from New York uh, knows that Rikers Island is, is like a place you don't want to go. There's Purgatory and then there's Rikers Island. Um, so imagine a 16-year-old kid there uh, with nobody to look out for him. They have tapes of him being beat up by guards and by um, other prisoners and what have you. So we can only imagine what happened to this young man. But because his family couldn't come up with $300, he was held for almost four years. When he got out, of course, he wasn't the same kid that went in. 
he eventually, to quick and dirty and for time, and just look at the story, please, I invite you to do so on my page. After being released and the charges finally being dropped, he went back and he had all of these issues. Imagine being locked up at that age and um, instead of having a girlfriend, being somebody's girlfriend and having no one that you could turn to for $300 for a backpack and it never came out whether he actually took the backpack or found it or whatever, whatever, whatever. After returning home, um, he eventually committed suicide. His mama found him after he hung himself. When they went to sue the city, Bloomberg was one of those people that said uh, that the case had no merit, so forth and so on, and he, and he fought to have anything given to this family. So I have sons. I always talk about my daughters because I love my daughters as a man should love his daughters. But my sons, I raised them to be independent and how to try to overcome adversity. But imagine them being in a system that you can't do anything to help. So that's enough about that. I'm trying not to go off on a tangent. So let's go to Vegas, last night's Democratic debate, the last one. This is the last time that you're going to see everybody on stage. First time and last time that we needed to see Bloomberg. So I call it what happened in Vegas. Last night I watched the Democrats debate in Vegas. I was reminded what happens in Vegas should stay in Vegas. Seriously though, here's my um, take on the significance of that debate. As I say, this the last time that we're gonna see all of the candidates on stage at the same time. Though I tried not to watch because I'd already chosen my topic, I couldn't resist. Maybe because Bloomberg was going to be on there and I knew that they would be going for him, but whatever, I just couldn't resist. Since then, I've heard everybody from CNN to Steve Harvey, who's obsessed with Michael Bloomberg's money, uh, give their opinion and their analyses. So here is the Renaissance man's assessment. Straight up with a little humor on the side. I call it the quick and dirty. Pete Buttigieg, um, Buttigieg, whatever. Pete obviously is a very charismatic road scholar, very well spoken, he's very articulate, he's quick witted, and he's a great public speaker. But he reminded me of a 13 year old on Idol or uh, The Voice. He needs to go back and refine his craft a little bit, get some real experience before he seeks a national office. Maybe he should try running for governor of Congress first. What I liked about him, Pete went after Amy like an old gun gunslinger in the old west. Amy, this town isn't big enough for both of us, see? There's only one room for one moderate on this ticket, and that's me. So I tell you what. But then Betsy Warren like Lucas McCain, the rifle man, came up and saved her momentarily. So much for Pete. Amy K. I don't know. I just don't see what people see in her, other than the fact that she's a woman, to be honest with you. Um, she's like watching paint dry. That's my assessment. She got exposed by Pete for not being for being shallow and not prepared. She got exposed by Warren for having a help plan Warren call a post-it note. Pete called out for not knowing the president of Mexico and her lack of minority support. But Amy tried to clap back with her Minnesota minority report, and then Pete hit her with a dead blow. If this is a race for president. This is a race for president, he said. If winning a race for Senate and Minnesota translated directly to become president, I would have grown up during the presidency of Walter Mondale. That was cold. That was cold. What it did is it probably 
infuse Amy with some women and certainly some of the people from Minnesota. So my Minnesota family, I need to know what y'all thinking about Amy after that, after that Walter Mondale slam. And I think you put a, a nail in and peace coffin, you know. Um, I could say something, but my joke would be insensitive, so I won't tell it. But Pete sounded like, okay, enough of that. <laughs> so Minnesota might rally behind Amy. Some women might rally behind Amy, but Amy's pretty much done sticking the fork in her. Bloomberg, what can I say about him that I haven't already said? Everything that I said about Bloomberg, they said about Doomsburg. Even Doom, even Bloomsburg kicked Bloomsburg. His feeble attempts at humor made him seem distant and out of touch. To everyone but Steve Harvey, who said him not being able to go to TurboTax with his thousand page tax return was a pimp move. <clears throat> Steve surveys said, nah. Mm -mm. Mike Bloomberg exposed himself for what he is, an egotistical billionaire who doesn't listen to anyone but himself. Remind you of somebody else we know? Okay. He tried to make jokes, but even his jokes jagged at poor people. Like he's so above you little people with your four-page tax returns. Mike's performance solidified my analysis that he's the flip side of the 45 record on the jukebox. See ya. Peace. Betsy Warren. Now, before she became Elizabeth, in high school she was known as Betsy. She was um, supposed to be king or queen of the debate team or what have you, and those skills definitely, definitely shown last night. Kudos. Warren took the gloves off, and she showed why she excelled in debate in high school. I would have loved to see her take on Hillary in 2016. But, like comparing the Warriors to the Bulls, it'll never happen. Betsy had the audacity to beat up on Amy, then came to her rescue when Pete started picking on her and beat her up again. As if to say, I'm the only one here who can beat up on the woman here tonight. Me and only me will beat up on Amy. Somehow, she dominates the camera. And she's recognized every time she has a point to make. She had the most camera time. So somebody in our camp either has some dirt on the media people to get Betsy this mic time. Or, I don't know. But every time Betsy has a point to make, she gets to have the last word on the subject. Check it out for yourself. Bernie the Sandman. Bernie was Bernie. Angry as hell. He reminds me of that, 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 that angry Muppet on Sesame Street. He's angry and arrogantly sure that he's going to get the nomination. He refused to, to release his medical records. Again, this frightens me because whoever his vice president is, is one heartbeat away from the big chair, the nuclear codes, and so forth and so on. So we don't get a chance to necessarily vet that person. They get it by proxy. We vote for Bernie, we're voting for them. It's not like we can vote for them and another vice president. So that really frightens me. For that reason and some other things, Bernie's, Bernie's a no-go for me. So see you soon, man. Like, um, what was that? The Apollo? You can tap your exit stage left. Indubitably. Like Betsy, Bernie gets a lot of media mic time. So I don't know if he's paying for it or what. I, I, I don't understand how that happens. Um, he said if he does not get the nomination that he will turn over his delegates. But then in the same breath, he said that he's looking to his super delegates to push him over the top. So what are you really saying, Bernie? 
you're angry, and I, I, I get it, but you should be angry at Hillary, not at us. His hit squad is as dangerous as the Tea Party was, and as 45 minions are today. So that's another reason for me to take pause at Bernie. So for that, now nah, we've had enough of this, these political cliques. Nah, mm -mm. one nation. Lastly, Joe Biden. Now, you know, and I won't hide it, I don't have a bias, but I made a choice based upon several factors. And last night, to me, Biden showed that. Whenever he spoke, and he didn't speak a lot, um, he spoke about his experience doing the things that other people claim that they can do, but he's already done them. So I applaud him for that. He obviously took a page from um, the Obama playbook. I don't know if he spoke with Barack or if he just took a page, but he stayed on the, on the high road. He tried to stay above the freight and the mudslinging. The only time he went off was when um, Bloomberg talked about, you know, these non-disclosure agreements. Um, when he speak, he reiterated the fact that he was the only person that had the foreign affairs and the experience working with Congress and Obamacare and so forth and so on. So he talked about some of these other people who wanted to disband it and went against it or didn't support it when it was being um, introduced and how things had to be changed and what's called political pork was at it and it was watered down. So I applaud him for that. He also reiterated that he's the only person as a VP that 45 fears most. I think that he can, that subdue Joe Biden we saw last night on stage with 45, <laughs> the gloves would go off and it would be a free fall. It would be more comical than it would be informative. And, and, and that's my prediction. If it happens, you know, move over Housewives of Atlanta. This is going to be the real, whoa, 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 you know. This is going to be like the, the thrill in Manila. With Biden being a killer, the killer gorilla. So anyway, I honestly believe he was relieved just to sit back and could talk about his experience without having to defend himself or fight off attacks. Again, he had this Obama-like go high and stay above the fray. Personally, I would have liked to see a little bit more aggression, more of the, the crazy Joe, but I understand why he chose not to do it. Folks, time is, I'm going to say this again. I said it last week and I'm going to say it again. Time is of essence. We are looking at Super Tuesday. As we go into Super Tuesday, everybody nationwide is going to have a chance to make their voices heard. So I implore you to get out and vote. Remember, between Mitt and Don, they're looking at getting rid of Social Security, getting rid of Medicare and Medicaid, scrubbing or getting rid of universal health care or Obamacare, and there will be no type of coverage for pre-existing conditions. Getting rid of a woman's right to choose. Getting rid of student loans and loan forgiveness so nobody will be able to go to college, afford to go to college, or live thereafter. Getting rid of low-cost home loans and more of what they call redlining. So you won't be able to live in certain neighborhoods. And if I were to try going back to New Orleans, I certainly couldn't afford to live in the, the city that I grew up in and some of the neighborhoods I grew up in. And lastly, to everybody out there that's a veteran or know a veteran, he's looking at scrubbing a lot of the diagnoses and the associated benefits, everything from TBI to PTSD and some of the other things going on. Um, and he's made 
no qualms about him feeling like, you know, he's never served, but he has no respect for generals or anybody else that serves. So it is what it is. Meanwhile, let me say this one more time. I said it last week and I'm going to say it one more time. In 2019, he gave a 14% decrease to corporate taxes, which basically means they went from 35 to 21%. The average person pays anywhere from 28 to 35% for taxes. So imagine that. On top of that, what he's trying to do is secure for the next 10 year for the wealthiest one to three percent tax breaks, which basically means everybody else pays dollars on a dollar. They will be literally paying percentages of a penny, not even a whole penny on a dollar. So we got to do it. In closing, I tried to make this entertaining because though the, the, the debate was entertaining to me, I don't think it changed anybody's mind about who they're going to vote for. Why? Because it's, it's too much mudslinging and not enough divulging of actual information. So you've got to do the legwork yourself. You got to do the heavy lifting. And that's why I come here week in and week out to try to vet some of these people to kind of show you how I do my due diligence and how we all should be doing it when we choose a candidate. It should be done logically, not emotionally, because anybody could say anything when they want you. Imagine being a battered man or woman and the person that batters you go out and buy you a dozen of roses and some candy. And two days later, they're beating you behind again. That's what we're looking at. If we need to let this idiot get back in there for another four years, or we get someone who's just like him. So personally, I would love to see no caucuses. I'd love to see nationwide primaries eight to 12 months before the general election so that we have a chance to start hearing from these people and everybody gets to vote earlier, not four months before we go to the general election. I just don't think that there's enough time. In closing, I hope you guys enjoyed my analysis of the, the Vegas debate. I tried to make it fun. I tried to make it funny. I tried to um, make it informative. Um, as usual, I've given you a lot to think about heading into Super Tuesday. That's when we'll all get a chance to make our voices heard. So go out and vote. Let's go out, show up, and show out. That's the only way we can get this done. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your support. Don't forget to go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. Um, and I'm going to post it. I'm going to post a, a link of my YouTube channel on my page so you guys can just click on it and go to it. But it's basically Henry Renaissance Man Batiste um, on YouTube. So um, I will be expanding to YouTube real soon. As always, see you. You guys be good. Hi, Tia. How you doing? I hope, um, hope you're feeling better, sweetheart. Hey, Kay. How you doing? I know Kay's going to be here every week. Love you, gal. Joe, what's up? That's my cover right it makes me happy when I see um, people that I have histories with, you know, whether it was back in high school or Miss Perry Little, my Marine, you know, was, uh, <laughs> herself. <laughs> What's up, Sydney? Okay. <laughs> kind of like my son in law now. Hey, Bev. What's up, baby? You better be watching. What's up, Pat? How you doing? There's another one of my classmates. Surreal, you get it done, baby. Get it done. Jim, what's up, family? 
Frida, hey, how you doing? My little cousin Mike, he, all of a sudden he grown and carried on with his own family. What's up, Marlon? What's happening, man? Glenda, what's happening, babe? I hope you guys enjoy what I had to say tonight. James K., another one of my Carver Wright's high school mates. Merrick, what's going on, Miss Calderon? Rhonda, what's going on, fam? Audrey, wow. This woman hates politics, but she loves the hell out of me, and I love you back, baby. Miss Gray, what's going on? Glad to see you in here. I'm glad you showed up. Because I was going to well, try to get a hold of you tonight, see if you got it. Sandra, what's happening? Miss Mackey, what's going on? Classmate, classmate. Janice, classmate, classmate. Miss Barrow, now see, you this is, you from New York. You should know about some of this firsthand, so I might have to pick your brain. Gwen, I know you're going to be here, except that one time you went to sleep on me and didn't catch my podcast. But she called and apologized to me, folks, so all is forgiven. And I, unlike Mike Bloomberg, I believe her um, apology was genuine. I think it was authentic. Authentic. <laughs> authentic. I'm making up words now. That's a just a word. You know, I believe that we, the people, should uh, keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Folks, it's always important. Uh, I really do. Show up and show up. So that's the way how we, we get this fool out of here. Good night.